this computer. Oh, that's right. Okay. We go back to share screen. Start on the These are these are very few slides, so there's no problem. Mm -hmm. We, we okay, are talking yeah. about the universal periodic review, which is the <laughs> third in the mechanisms. We did special procedures, we did treaty bodies, and now we are doing the universal periodic review. We said it is universal largely because all states are reviewed, universal because all states review, and it is universal because all human rights are reviewed. Are reviewed. And we said that it is periodic because it happens every four and a half years. There is a midterm periodic review and the follow up activities are sustained between that whole, uh, uh, whole period. We also made the case that uh, the universal periodic review has gained prominence and popularity amongst states. Almost all states have been reviewed in the first two cycles. Uh, except Israel, which missed out in the first cycle due to its contestation of the Palestinian situation, and uh, South Sudan, which, uh, which was uh, not a state at the time of the first cycle. So right now, all the UN member states are in the third cycle, and as we said, Kenya is one of those that we are reviewed at the beginning of this year. Okay? <laughs> So we are back where we started and we said the first phase is a preparation of reports. Yes. And uh, the first report is the report of the state. Developed by a way of consultation between the relevant state department. It could be the Ministry of Justice, it could be the Attorney General's Chamber, it could be the State Department for Justice which sends out messages to the entire government departments and agencies and ministries to try and pull together all the information necessary to make a case of a self-assessment of the state on what it has done during the period mm -hmm. under review. Mm -hmm. The second report is a compilation by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights who goes through all the various agencies of the United Nations, establishing whether they have made any human rights observations and recommendations to the state under review during the period under review. review. These UN bodies that are solicited information from include UN agencies, they include special procedures and treaty bodies. Okay. So if in the period under review, some visit was made by a special rapporteur, then the recommendations made by that special rapporteur would form part of what that report will be saying. If the state under review appeared before any treaty body, during that period under review, then some of the concluding observations will form part of this compilation by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Report number three is the stakeholder report. On the slide, it is listed as the civil society report. But that's where you and I are expected to do our best. In this situation, practitioners in various aspects of human rights develop reports to the UPR mechanism. And the reports developed in this sense serve to affirm, critique, or clarify the government report. I'll give an example. Uh, Let's say, for example, education. Governments are in the habit of trying to sound good in front of other governments. So they say, our government, when we came to power, only two million kids were going to school. We now have five million kids going to school. All right? 
So in their estimation, we have increased access to education in this whole context of free primary education. Rarely will the government mention that it has not recruited teachers for the last three years. Rarely. It would take a civil society group involved in advocacy for children's rights, including education, to point out, uh, say, look here, government, you've done a very good job in increasing uh, the number of schools available, and you've done a good job in terms of uh, enrollment of children in school. We, however, recommend that you lift the ban on recruitment of teachers. You get the point. In that way, the civil society organization will be contributing to clarifying the government report. You don't deny that they have built schools. You don't deny that enrollment has increased, but you point out a quality question. Because for sure, the children are in school, many of them are enrolled, but one class has 100 kids, one teacher 100 kids. So you then, as a person, as an organization involved in, in advocacy for education and children's rights, you point that out. Now, the same would apply for us in the trafficking sector. Most of the things that governments would say is that with regard to human trafficking, we have an anti-trafficking in persons act. We have a national task force. They will not mention what they are not doing right. They will not mention usually that there's corruption in the system which is undermining the process. They will only mention those things that they have done to meet their obligations. Now, mm -hmm. remember we said that because the state is the primary duty bearer in human rights, it has a duty to respect, meaning do not aggress rights. It has a duty to protect, prevent anyone from aggressing rights, and it has a duty to fulfill. Mm -hmm. So usually what the governments do, they'll say, this is what we have done to fulfill. We have an anti-trafficking policy. We have an anti-trafficking act. We have, uh, uh, we have recruited more police officers. You understand me? But sometimes maybe they have not trained the police officers. Sometimes cases are not moving, people are filing cases and nothing is being done or the response is slow. They will not mention that. So it will be in this third report that practitioners like you and I interested in this human rights situation with regard to trafficking in persons will affirm those good things that government is doing but point out the things it should do better. Fair enough? Yes. yes. That's how the report yeah. writing phase ends. Usually the NGOs are supposed to submit their report between six and eight months in advance. The government usually submits its, its report last. First and last at the same time. Why? Usually its report is out before the NGOs submit theirs, but it is out in draft form. Then the process of report writing goes on, but the government has a right to file ultimately its final report a few months before the review itself. Like Kenya was going to be reviewed in uh, January. I think government submitted its last document in September, October around there, the final document. But we had seen its draft earlier because we started working on the third report, which is the stakeholder report. We started working on it in March. So we already have had a clue. And because we had been part of the midterm review, which, I will, which I'll talk back about during the follow-up, we already had material uh, to work with and to be able to evaluate how government is performing. Now, this requires that you are familiar with the human rights issues in your area. You know what government has a duty to do. You are able to know it is doing or it is not doing so that you are able to formulate a good stakeholder report, okay? 
Now, phase two is the UPR examination in an interactive dialogue. This means the government under review sits at the front of the panel. Those of you who've been in academics, people have to defend their, their thesis and their dissertations. It is something like that, where the minister concerned or cabinet secretary chooses from among the government agencies a delegation of people who are likely to be useful to him or her in responding to these global questions. But by the time this review is taking place, all these three reports have already been filed. Okay. And remember, report number three is a compilation of the stakeholder report. What do I mean? We as Talita Kum could prepare a report, but the associations of sisterhoods of Kenya would prepare a report. The Tinka, the Tanzanian Association of Sisters would also do what? Prepare a report. Now, there are several reports coming from various groups. Then it will be the duty of the Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights to turn those reports into one single report. It is usually a maximum of uh, anything between 10 and 15 pages. So they will cluster together and say, joint submission one. All those NGOs that collectively wrote one report. Joint submission two, joint submission three. You will see the samples when you're dealing with your, your, your assignment there. Okay. Now, this interactive review is a review in the plenary. Review in plenary means it will be taking place in Geneva, in the UN Assembly Hall, and all the member states of the UN interested in reviewing that specific state will be present. And the government is given usually 70 minutes in total a portion of which is used to give a summary of its state report, which was report number one, and the other portion in responding to comments and recommendation. After presenting a summary of its report, an opportunity is given to the various states available to give uh, recommendations. The whole duration of the review is three hours. First, remove the 70 of the nation, 70 minutes. What remains? Three hours is how many minutes? 180 minutes. 180. Minus 70 minutes. You remain with 110. 110. Now, those 110. Are yeah. 50 minutes. Okay, yes. So those 100 and uh, the reason I'm counting minutes is that it is very important. 110 minutes are then divided among all the states present. <laughs> all the states present share that time. So if there are fewer states, they will have more time to speak. If there are many states interested, sometimes people speak for only 30 seconds. <laughs> Yes, so that is the time available. And uh, it, it has happened very often that the, the chair of the plenary just switches off the microphone. Once he says it is two minutes, then microphone goes off and we, they give the opportunity to someone else. But essentially that is the process that has to be used very well. Now, you who developed your third report, you are not a member of the UN plenary, are you? Is the Association of Sisterhoods of Kenya no. a member of the UN plenary? No. no. Then no. how no. will our issue of human trafficking be raised in the plenary? It's already the compiled report. Who told you that these states will speak about it because it is in the compiled report? <laughs> Within 30 seconds. <laughs> how do you get <laughs> How do you get the state? Yes. How is it going to be reported? Yes. How Which group get, should report? Yes. How do you get the state to prioritize your issue? Remember, we have like 200 NGOs that wrote 
in that yeah. report. Everyone interested, one is food, the other is health, the other is water, the other is whatever. Mm -hmm. So how do we get people to speak about trafficking in plenary? How do we get the states to do it? Yes, how? The UN High Commissioner uh -huh. will be able to look at it. I don't know how, but I know the UN High Commissioner could do something. The Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights, he has already done his yes. job. He has compiled the reports and made them available. The states are now meeting to examine your government. You would like that a state speaks on your behalf. How would you make a state speak on your behalf? Because this whole process only makes sense if a recommendation consistent with what you do is made on the floor of the house. Mm -hmm. I'm still asking. Mm. How do we go about it? By standing outside with the placards. Plac <laughs> 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 I love this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jane Joan, your, your street work is. Typical good working. shepherd, sister. <laughs> they will not be seeing you. They are inside the plenary. How will they see you? Wow, maybe wow. we have to. Maybe we have to apply by writing a letter. Ah, uh how -huh, you writing to who? To the sector of the UN, the high commissioner now. To the high commissioner. To those who are leading, yeah. who are leading that uh, uh, the session. Someone is making a point there. We have to make sure that we do what is called pre-session advocacy before the review. Some work has to take place. As soon as you submit your report, you need to turn your individual report. Remember, everyone is doing advocacy. People involved in extrajudicial killings are doing their work. You who is involved in traffic is doing your work. People involved in health are doing their work. Everyone has to sell his idea to a state, all two, all three, so that when they're in plenary, they prioritize your requests. You understand? Yes. The, yes. the third report yeah, yeah. you wrote assesses the government from your perspective and you give recommendations. Well knowing that if the government makes those takes on, accepts those recommendations, your work back home will be made easy. But you cannot depend on the report you filed. Your recommendation must be made to the government on your behalf by another government. That's when it will form part of the UN report. Okay. What is the, how do we do this pre-session advocacy? Uh -huh. I'm coming next. Which country are you from, sister? My origin, <laughs> Philippines, no, no, no. but I'm working for Kenya. Yes, you're working in Kenya. Yes. And uh, you are in the Ministry of Trafficking. You are, your service yes. is in the area of human trafficking. Yes, yes. Have you heard that the government of Kenya has been funded by any government with regard to human trafficking? EU. Yes, EU. by the EU. Exactly. Yes. So mm -hmm. as soon as you file your report, you need to look for the leader of the EU delegation mm -hmm. in Kenya and take to them a copy of your stakeholder report mm -hmm. that you filed okay. asking him to advise you on who would be the best nation in the EU. Okay. Mm -hmm to mm. present your recommendation. Mm. Even within EU, you will establish which specific government is actually interested more in trafficking than others. Mm. All right? And yes. you establish a relationship with the ambassador or high commissioner of that country here in Kenya. But mm. that is not enough because <laughs> that ambassador or high commissioner will have to communicate to the capital. You know what I mean by capital? Mm -mm. No. The capital of the country? Yes. This is how okay. the diplomats operate. The guy is uh, in Kenya, mm. but he says, I have to communicate with the capital, meaning you will have to communicate to the Minister of Foreign Affairs back home. Mm. And then the capital will communicate to Geneva. Mm. So if it is okay. a real issue, it will come through the ambassador here, to the capital and then to the ambassador in Geneva, if it is a real issue for them. Issue. For them. What is an issue to you might not be an issue for them. Yes, you're right. Okay? 
So what some of us have been doing because of that long process yes. is to go to Geneva straight. It's, that is the, the yes, system what, now? Uh, what we have been doing in the, in the procession mm -hmm. is to go to Geneva straight. Here you leave the information with the ambassador here, praying that he may mm -hmm. send it to the capital and then to Geneva. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Yes. Mm -hmm. But in the process, we go straight to where? Geneva. 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 Yeah. Then and, if and the target, we... the ambassador of this country that we are counting mm -hmm. on, who is in Geneva? Uh, okay. 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 And share with yeah. them the same report. Mm, okay. Okay. Yes. Asking no, them that amongst Which the country? many things they want to tell government, Please prioritize our issue. And the guy has some time between 30 seconds and a minute. <laughs> so the things to prioritize are really many. Many governments, you, you remember I asked you which government is funding the trafficking mm. program. Usually yes. when you target a government that gives your government money for a certain thing, and your human rights work is in that area, chances are they would raise the issue. Mm, okay. Chances are they would raise okay. the issue when your government comes up for review. It is just a strategy. Now, in the mm. last two cycles, we've had an opportunity. There's an organization called UPR Info. UPR? So, UPR hyphen info. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you how to navigate their site later. Uh, this organization has in the last two cycles, in the first cycle we went, I was serving with the, the Franciscan Just and Peace Office. So Franciscans International is a Franciscan NGO at the, uh, in Geneva. So it helps coordinate Franciscan work there and advocacy. So they asked me to go over and try to do this, uh, this pre-session advocacy. We prepared... Uh, fact sheets from our bigger report, and we are going around selling it around. They organize for me which meetings, who will I see where, at what time. So when I get there, for me and business, we are talking about in Franciscans, we are doing housing, we are doing food, those socioeconomic rights. But out of the 12 permanent delegations I met, I mean, uh, permanent missions that I met, only three were interested in these questions. The others were asking me civil and political rights. At that time, they were interested in human rights defenders. And for us, we are not done any work on what? On human rights defenders. But you talk, you talk, and then they say, hmm, how is government doing with regard to human rights defenders? And then you have to distinguish. You say, yes, but there are organizations working on this. We know this is happening. There is some protection to a given extent, but not yet. And uh, by that time, we are in a pre-constitutional phase in the first cycle uh, in 2010. So then in the second cycle, this organization UPR Info was in existence. And what was it doing for us? It would pull together all these permanent missions into one hall. Then those of us from Kenya who are going to be part of the procession, we all go and sit in front of these fellows to try and talk about our issues. They would give us three to five minutes each uh, at that time, we were around eight of us uh, to present to these permanent missions. So you don't have to hop from one street to another looking for which permanent mission. They would all convene in one hall organized by UPR Info, and then we address them. Of course, you could then thereafter go up and target some nations that you know, but we would have spoken to them in that sense. And this would serve to, to know, yes, we don't know enough about Kenya, especially those who don't do a lot of business with Kenya or with this country that you're representing at that time, but they get a clue of what the first three reports are about. They get to attach a face. And some of them, when you'd mention something and they're interested, after the presentation, they pull you aside. So could you tell me a little more about this issue you raised? Then in that way, you know that this- uh, I turn your looks and, and don't even you know, realize that you're just a shitty actor. Okay. okay. So, um, yo, so, so generally, that's how the procession would work. It has to be purposeful. It has to be strategic. Who is most likely Next question. to raise my issue? 
Uh, in the, uh, yeah, what did we, the situation we had recently, yes, when Kenya was being reviewed for the third time, which was January, we prepared a stakeholder report. Uh, we were together with Edmund Rice. Edmund Rice Advocacy Network is the advocacy group uh, established by the Presentation Brothers and the Christian Brothers. Eh? Then uh, mm -hmm. we had several other groupings. So we do this report and send it yeah. to Geneva. And the plan was to have our sister organizations, Edmund Rice, Franciscans International, to submit it. Too much on your works in now, oh. in that stakeholder report, we had two issues that are not very popular. The issue on protection of human life and the issue of uh, protection of the family. Now, our sister organizations in Geneva, because they are largely donor funded and they want to be politically correct, they feared to associate themselves with our issues on the protection of human life and the protection of, uh, of the family. Those of you who were on the, on the webcast yesterday on the webinar, you understand what I mean. Eh? So we had to separate the reports. We left food, education, housing, and water in one report, and then submitted life and family as a separate report. Submitting it directly from, from Kenya through KCPF, the Kenya Christian Professionals Forum. Meanwhile, the other one was submitted collectively by our sister organizations in, in Geneva. But we did not tire, so we targeted Hungary, we targeted Poland, we targeted Russia, we targeted the USA, several countries. And for some reason, none of these countries spoke about life and family. But some other small countries like Hungary, I mean like Haiti and uh, the Solomon Islands, for some reason, the ones who mentioned our rights and our recommendations. And I was wondering why. So I do an investigation and I find out that actually these ambassadors in Geneva, they meet and share out who will say what. Because they've been approached by many people, so they literally lobby each other and they say, I have too much on my table, you will say this, you will say the other. You get the point? Mm -hmm. Yes. But for you to be able to get them to share what they will say, you, have, you must have made your issue an issue. Mm -hmm. If you don't make it an issue, it will not float even in what they are sharing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So that's how okay. there's a lot of work that happens around here. A lot of work. You've drafted the report, you've submitted it, you have to sell it, you have to turn your report into a fact sheet. Fact sheet is an easy read. Eh? You could have written yeah. a 10-page mm -hmm. report, but you have to turn it into a two-pager. So that when you go to a meeting, you're giving out that two-pager. And you're speaking and saying all the 10 page things in five minutes because they don't have too much time for you. So the ability to persuade them to make your issue an issue is important. You use diplomatic ties, you use the past relationship of this government with the country, you look out for what they're interested in. Sometimes it is the personal interest of the ambassador himself. Mm. You find out what all right. are, you find out where their heart is. And that's where yes, we start. The passion, yes, yes the passion. Yes, we a given, uh, a given point, okay? So phase two is that interactive dialogue. Assuming you've already lobbied and whatever, so by the time your government is receiving these comments and recommendations, you're sure someone will speak on your behalf about the rights you're interested in. As soon as government has spoken and these comments are given, the government has an opportunity to declare some of the recommendations made as immediately accepted, suspended, or rejected. They don't use the word rejected. They use the word noted. That's the diplomatic language. So when you find a recommendation noted, uh, don't think they have noted it down. It means it is rejected. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so usually, uh, the, the, the government is then given an opportunity, but the beauty about the UPR is when a recommendation is rejected, meaning noted, it has a duty to explain why. They cannot just reject what? A, an obligation. 
I'll remember in, in 2010, we had uh, the late Mutula Kilonzo in Kenya was the Minister of Justice at that time. And uh, there are two questions that are still ringing in my mind up to now, because I followed the proceedings by webcast. And they ask him, Honorable Mutula Kilonzo, can you tell us what is the plight of indigenous people in, uh, in Kenya? And this guy says, in Kenya, we are all indigenous. There is no indigenous person. We, we are all indigenous in Kenya. So that, that, that issue of indigenous persons does not apply. And true, we have indigenous persons in this country. They even mm -hmm. had to win a case recently in 2017. The Ogiek, I don't know, we have several groups here. And the international definition of indigenous people's rights is dependent on self-definition. A community self-defines as indigenous and its lifestyle would justify that. Anyway, mm -hmm. so he, he had to give an answer, even though the answer was flimsy, he gave an answer anyway. And in that same year, we are going to have a constitution, and by the time actually the constitution came out, indigenous persons are mentioned only once in a category in one of the provisions defining minorities. It doesn't stand out, out in the Bill of Rights. Indigenous persons are not listed in the Bill of Rights, indigenous persons' rights. Uh, they're oh. somewhere down there in the section on minorities. So sad, eh? Then mm. the, the other question that I still remember quite well at that time was, uh, he was asked about the rights of the LGBTQ community. And the poor mm. man says, look here, uh, our people are not yet ready for these things. We, we, you know we have to first educate them, so uh, we, we, we don't intend to accept that recommendation on the ground that our people are not yet ready, they need to be prepared to understand these things. Now, if you are aware that the push for LGBT rights has been going on since 2010, you know how much progress they have made. Those of you who were in the, in the webinar yesterday, you know how much progress has been made by this community. Anyway, so a state would be required to explain why it is rejecting a given uh, recommendation. Uganda was uh, asked in the second cycle uh, why it is not investing money in health. Then I think the explanation the minister gave that, uh, you know, in the past one, two years, we've chosen to invest in infrastructure. If we invest in infrastructure so that food can reach where it should reach, then people should not fall sick. Somehow, some fake explanation there. Because uh, these governments have been given a reason to... Uh, to they're supposed to give a reason for why they are rejecting a recommendation. We had an experience on Kenya in the second cycle, which was 2015. Our coalition of faith-based groups asked Kenya to spend 15% of GDP on health based on the Abuja declaration that it was party to. And we also asked them to spend 10% of GDP on uh, agriculture for purposes of food security based on the Maputo uh, declaration. And for some reason, government outrightly rejected these two recommendations. And the explanation they gave was that these recommendations sound absolute in character, and they do not recognize the developmental and economic progress of the country, meaning by demanding 15% of GDP, which is measurable, by the way, they wouldn't like to commit, at that time it was January, if they had accepted that recommendation, it would mean that in the budget read out in June, they should have done that. And that would be just too much for them to commit to. So they chose to find an explanation of saying, requiring us to spend this money is absolute in character, and uh, governments don't usually want to be put on the spot. They, write, um, they would like you make... Um, softer recommendations or ambiguous recommendations which are subject to uh, various interpretations. Anyway, they rejected those two recommendations, but by the time we came to the third cycle, there was evidence that they had implemented our recommendation, though not fully. Because at that time, agriculture, they were spending 2.7%. They had been able to move it to 45 at that time in health, I think they were doing around 4.7 and they had moved it to around 6. It is still poor, but they had made some uh, progress in that direction. For the record, I need to point out that the UPR 
the statistics indicate that the recommendations of the UPR, usually 50% of them are implemented within the first two years after the review. Now that is a, a stellar performance. And 20% of the usually rejected recommendations end up implemented anyway. They rejected them at the review, but by the time you come back for the next review, they will have implemented at least 20% of what they substantively rejected. So it is a mechanism uh, that we could count on to influence process. So after the review, there will be a process of adoption. The adoption means government has made a preliminary announcement at the review of what they've accepted, what they've suspended uh, for consideration back home, and what they've rejected. Then they come back and adopt the report. Adoption of the report means it becomes part of the UN record. It becomes an official UN document once it is adopted. After the adoption of the report, the next thing we hear of is called the follow-up. Now, follow-up, that is you and I, making sure that any recommendation that was made on your behalf and that government accepted it, you get it to implement. You literally run around it to make sure it implements. If government accepts the recommendation but is... Uh, or rejected a recommendation, for example, you come back home and try to organize for noise to be made so that it becomes priority. We did not come back and organized crime, I mean, uh, organized noise, but we came back and uh, did not sympathize with the government when the nurses and doctors were on strike. You know that? The mm -hmm. people in Kenya know that. Uh, uh, after the 2015 review, between 2015 and 2020, we've had so many doctors and nurses strikes. Yes. Uh, all yes. we had to do is to present to these associations uh, the rejection by government of this expenditure. And for them, they were able to read into it a lack of interest in promoting this sector. <coughs> Happily now, we can happily say that even though they are not spending 15% of GDP in Kenya on health, there is evidence that the political commitments in terms of manifestos, in terms of, uh, they call it uh, agenda, I don't know, the development agenda, the big four agenda for the country, has an entire health component to it. That is usually an indication of the progress being made with regard to some advocacy, okay? So in this period of follow-up, after around two, two and a half years, you convene again and begin, you do a matrix and you say, recommendation X, how much has government done? Is it fully implemented, partially, or not implemented? So you do some sort of assessment and you ask yourself, why isn't it happening? Then in the process, you're preparing a report for the next review. So that's what we call it a cycle. It is continuous, it is not an event. When you choose that your organization gets involved in this process, you need to know what was last said about this issue. Was, were all my concerns as an organization covered or not? What is missing so that we prepare to raise it at the next review? If all my concerns were raised, why isn't government implementing? What is not going right? so that we are able to raise it at the next review. This mechanism, because of its popularity and the general acceptance amongst the UN member states, it is a very effective one. The, we've seen real progress. Uh, we've seen real progress in the implementation of human rights uh, by virtue of the UPR, far, far more superior to the special procedures and the treaty bodies. Sorry, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Um, in the follow-up process, uh, yes. is it possible, or is it like that when some people are making these um, signatory uh, documents where you have to sign and then it is sent to the UN or so? Is that one part of uh, yeah. uh, taking okay. part of... The, um, those petitions, um, the petitions are, are a new way of doing things 
but in the follow-up, a petition could be counterproductive. A follow-up mm -hmm. means that when you go home, you know that government accepted the recommendation on trafficking in persons. Okay. Okay? Then mm -hmm. you go to the task force. You're writing to the task force. Mm -hmm. Okay? That uh, our government accepted this recommendation and this recommendation with regard to human trafficking. Mm -hmm. We would like to come and see you, chairperson of the task force, to explore ways of partnering mm -hmm. on implementing these. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, mm -hmm. meaning that you're helping government meet its commitment by uh, no, by making it know that uh, there are people who are interested in what we said. Mm -hmm. okay. It is Thank a way you. of getting global accountability localized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Government made commitments in Geneva, but here locally in the country, there are individuals and organizations which mm -hmm. are watching and are following mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Richard, I have a question. Huh? Yes. Uh, mine is based on the on the third phase. We're talking about the adoption, uh, adoption to the final. Uh, yes. Mm. You see, uh, experience has it that, mo like just like you said, every state wants to show a very good uh, face of his uh, government. Say that. Yes. Is it possible to talk about, about adoption when the reality, you know, is very difficult to see a state that accepts this risk report? Most times we hear, we hear them accusing, accusing the UPR of being biased or being uh, some, some of the things being exaggerated. We talk about reports when most of the times you see states always deny uh, the report given to them by the, these external bodies. Yes, there has been a lot of uh, criticism for treaty bodies, for sure. Your, your, your assessment is with treaty bodies. The UPR has not suffered a lot of backlash in that area. Mm. Probably because of the participatoriness, the fact that government takes precedence, it is a government-led process, and the rest of us are just commenting on it and things like that. Governments seem to have believed the UPR more. For sure, treaty bodies, governments treat them with... Uh, with a lot of contempt, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. In, this, in this case, then, Richard, please. In this case, then, if they are okay with the report of the UPR, which it means that deep down there are certain things that are not, you know, maybe things are being said in a diplomatic way. Yes. <laughs> being accused, they are being accused. They just they are being accused, but indirectly. Yes. Because I know. If you accuse them directly, uh, maybe most of what you are looking for, you will never get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, diplomatic language becomes important. But you know, see, the point is, because governments would like to look good in front of other governments, yeah. they build their own internal pressure on themselves to do the right things. Mm. Because this process is about, actually, it is a show off. These guys literally tell how they've recruited new kids, they've built more schools, they've done this, they've done this, they've done this. This is what they're saying. And then when they hear fellow nations pointing out laxities and whatever, usually they take it serious. And it is a dialogue. That's the beauty about it. It is not like a, it's not like a, a penal process or a, a judicial process. It is called an interactive dialogue. And you figure out to get the best words to say the difficult things and uh, the, the governments will take note of it. So I belong to the school of thought that the UPR has been effective in getting governments to do what they have to do. We are not there, we are not where we should be, but uh, it has been a very successful process. If you start with the 2006, 2016, we are coming to how many, 13, 14 years down the road. It's been an effective process in my estimation. Okay, then finally, Okay, yeah, that is the, the, okay, so we worked with Edmund Rice, Franciscans International, and Pax Romana as the, the partnering entities at that time. Now, this slide, I don't think it is clear, but what I did was to go to the website of UPR Info, UPR hyphen info, and searched all states under review, you see? Mm -hmm. Then all recommending states, and the issue I was looking for was, Trafficking. trafficking and I was looking in all cycles you understand what I mean by cycles now okay 
and I mm -hmm. wanted it to show me only recommendations. Of course, the maximum result <laughs> per page is 300, but look here. This was the last page. So since the first mm -hmm. cycle, we have 2,289 recommendations on trafficking. Mm -hmm. So trafficking has been featuring in, in the UN reports since 2006. When you put all the states together, you have up to 2,289 uh, recommendations made on trafficking. Mm -hmm. Okay, in all its various uh, variations. So, so it is an issue of interest. So if you are a practitioner in human trafficking and you've not been involving in the UPR process, this is the time to get involved because it is an issue that is already being considered by other states. Okay, I'd like to stop the sharing so that I can try and get to the internet so we can try and navigate a few of these sites. You've lost my screen, have you? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. yeah. We show the beautiful people, which is okay to see first the beautiful people. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's good, it's good, yeah. Okay. So let me see. I need to share the screen again. And I do this. What do you see? Google. You're seeing the search Google. engine. Okay, our usual office is the office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. And uh, let me hope the internet does not disappoint me. Okay, all right. And again, you go to this section on human rights bodies and you see the universal periodic review, you see that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. So when you go to the universal periodic review, you see this documentation by country? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That? That's documentation yes. by country. And documentation by country, you then get the list of countries there. Like I'm going yeah. to select, you see, I had already checked on Uganda, Pakistan, and Kenya. Okay. Uh, okay. That's why they are pop on my screen. I had checked on them already. But let me choose a country that is not represented in this class. Uh, let's Nigeria. do Zambia. 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 Nigeria. Zambia. <laughs> no. Let me choose a country, a country that is not represented here. Let's do Rwanda is okay. Rwanda. Rwanda. Hey, we don't want to do people's assignments here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Zambia, I mean Latvia. We've chosen Latvia. Now Latvia was last reviewed in the second cycle. So it has not yet been reviewed the third time. You see? Mm. Okay, so other, if you go to the Kenyan page, this will be reading, this will be reading third cycle. Yeah, I, I, I saw it. When, I it. when you go to the Kenyan page, it will be third cycle. But Latvia mm. is yet to be reviewed for the third time. So if mm. I'm to, according to the assignment, you look into the national report, you see? Mm -hmm. You look into the compilation, then you look into the stakeholder report, and then you look into the outcome of the review. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come again, please. Ah, yeah. I'm just explaining the assignment. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm just explaining the assignment. I'm saying the assignment is requiring right. you to get your government or your state, go to this documentation, and pull down the most recent review. Now for Latvia, most re recent review is the second cycle. People mm -hmm. in Kenya, their most recent review will be third cycle. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then you pull down the national report, you pull down the whatever. And those of you who speak Spanish, feel free to read it in Spanish, you will understand it better. The Francophone, Kinsley, you will enjoy that one, I know. Okay. Then uh, compilation of the UN information. Take Sorry, the, Richard. Yes. When you say about this reporting information, when we need to send, you mean the the practice problem number yes. seven? Yes. This is no. This, uh, I, I, this is. I saw that. I saw. I need to post and send uh, like the others. Uh, I don't know if I'm communicating. We, ha you know, these practice problems help you to process, and you submit exactly. a document. Exactly, number seven. No, this, no, this assignment. This assignment is practice problem number nine. 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 Mm -hmm. Ah, that's right. That's right. Nine. Mm -hmm. I want to do all. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> For example, Richard. This is the national report. Where oh, is oh my God. Okay. Uh, let, me see. let me see if I can share my screen here. <laughs> no, it's seven. How is it you all? Uh -uh. Oh, this is very far. <laughs> oh my it's God. This, this is the last one, good people. Don't get tired of me. This is the last one. You're not going to yes. see <laughs> No, we are not tired. We are not tired. We are not tired. Jesus Christ. Here is the question. Are we, are we to do all the practice problems? Do you see that problem now? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we see it. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, Richard, man. the problem is... Yeah. People have suffered sorry, with sorry. me for these two weeks, I can imagine. <laughs> yes, I saw my assignments. <laughs> Too much. Too much. Too much. You still have time until you make it. Live last night, so. Okay. Thank do you, you, Richard. But do you, see, do you see that problem? Yes, we do. Yes. First, first spend yes. some few minutes reading it, then I will go and explain it. Okay. Ah, <laughs> Is that fair enough? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, I hope you now understand what we are doing. So yes. if, if my country was to be I Latvia, its most recent review is the second cycle. I'll go to the mm -hmm. national report. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's see if we can pull it down. It might not allow to download. I don't know. Ah, okay. I think it has allowed. We have got the blessed rice. Blessed mm -hmm. gift. Seven bucks. My machine is <coughs> running very tight. Okay. So you get into that report and you just do one thing. Look out for the references to trafficking, sale of children, child pornography. Meaning what has mm -hmm. government said about itself about the trafficking question? You understand? Yes. Yeah. That's what you look for. And then you go to the compilation by the UN information and find out, is there any UN agencies that spoke about uh, trafficking? Is there any special procedure that spoke about trafficking? was Latvia visited by the Special Rapporteur on Trafficking in Persons, okay? The same principle, you then go to the stakeholder report. You remember the third report, this one? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And then you also yes. look in that report and find out which organizations spoke about trafficking. What did they say? Yes. What was the NGO? Mm. Mm. Okay. And then you go to the outcome report. Yeah. Where is, uh, okay. Outcome, outcome of, of the, the review. review. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you are targeting report of the working group. You see that? Yes. yes. That one. Yes. Eh? Report of the working group. And that's what you're looking for. Okay. You understand me? Yes. And you're able to dig out the what? Now, on that same page, usually there is the first cycle. I'm only interested in the most recent. You see first cycle? You see first cycle? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm more interested in the most recent, which is second cycle for some countries or third cycle for other countries. Mm-hmm. Fair enough? Yes, mm-hmm. I think so, yes. <laughs> One more technique. <laughs> the other technique. One more problem. The technique is this one now. You know, we are going to practice these things after the course, so don't get worried. Anytime okay. a country is coming after up the COVID. I will be harassing you anytime a country is coming up for, for review. I'll be making after the COVID. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if a Noir has just popped in. Okay. Now, do you see this site, good people? Take a note of it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a very good site to use in UPR information. It is an NGO for sure, but it has been mm-hmm. very supportive to our work. Dot org. Dot org. Yeah. Now it has a database. Oh, and mm-hmm. it has statistics. So mm. I'm using the database of recommendations to do the search that I just did. For example, state under review, let me put uh, Latvia. Now this will only help you with the recommendations bit, meaning the outcome report only. This one makes your job easy only for the outcome report. It will not tell you the state report, neither will it tell you the compilation. You understand me? Mm-hmm. Yes. This one only makes the job easy for you. Uh, Not just the recommendations. Yes, the okay. recommendations that this government has received uh, for the specific cycle you're looking for. For example, Latvia. Mm. our country is Latvia. Mm. You see? Latvia. Yes. yes, Latvia is right here. And we are saying recommending state all, meaning who has ever recommended. The issue we are saying is what? Trafficking. We are looking for trafficking. Let's see. PIP. Yes. Okay. And uh, let's do the most recent cycle, which is the second Two. cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's publish up to 300 results. We are looking for recommendations only. Let's go. And you see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See that? Ah, okay. Mm. State under review is country Latvia. supported, eh? Mm. You see, state under review is Latvia. The recommendation that was given by which state? You see, excuse me, Poland. I have a question. Yes. Go ahead. Was I it have a question. Excuse me. Yes. Yes. All countries have human trafficking review? All? All countries? The UPR reviews all rights. Okay. And because it reviews all rights, the rights associated to human trafficking have always been popping up. That's why when I, re- when I assessed in the database for how many times human trafficking has featured, for all countries together, we got up to 2,289. 89. yeah. Okay, so for every universal periodic review in the past, it seems human ra- trafficking has popped up. Okay. Now, this mm-hmm. UPR info site has helped us narrow down a search for Latvia. Who has ever told Latvia about human trafficking in the second cycle? 
You see, Poland has spoken to eat Philippines. You see, Philippines, Philippines, say, Philippines said, step up efforts to enforce anti-trafficking legislation. That was the recommendation. And it was supported, meaning government accepted it. Understand me? Issue yes. is trafficking. Okay? Okay. Yeah. And those are the, in, the, in the second cycle. On There's the, a donation on, there. <laughs> Yeah, there's what? Donation. Where is now donation? Down at the, the bottom. Ah, donate. donation. Yes, this donation is to UPRI Info. UPRI Info is an NGO. So if you've liked the work ah. we've done for you, please, you can give them a dollar or two. Eh? <laughs> 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 oh, I'm making our job easy in searching for the database for recommendations. So if you are amused by what they do, you give them a donation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So that's how mm -hmm. the search uh, would be, really, if someone could say that. If you are to use this database for recommendations. If I kept that, and uh, do we have anyone from India? No, we have Pakistan. Let's see India. Ah, you see? These are uh, Canada, US, whatever. They have all addressed in. Noted, noted. Noted means rejected. Uh -huh. Let's see what they noted. Thank you very much, sister, for, for being keen. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. So uh, India is the under review, and Paraguay says continue to strengthen its efforts to combat trafficking in persons by providing the necessary budget to establish mm -hmm. a larger number of local bodies to combat this scourge. They noted, meaning they rejected it. However, they... Uh, there, are, there are so many noted. <laughs> but they accepted the one from the Holy See. Implement Holy monitoring Holy. mechanism to stop people trafficking. Uh, See, that, is, that is a soft one. You understand me? Eh? Yeah. So they, they accepted the soft one. When you touch budget, they, 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 they reject. When, when, when you... <laughs> hey. That, this is our government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, one from the, Holy see, the Holy See is Richard, the first one. Yes, Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Oh, okay. And uh, what does it mean, um, um, Richard, observer? Is there an observer? Yes, Holy because the, the, the Holy See is not a state party. They don't treat it as, like a government, okay. but it has a permanent okay. observer status. It sits yes, with yes. them, it interacts with them. But there, yes. are, there are even things that the Holy See does not get involved in, especially if they are, if they are bordering on the political. It will not get involved. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah. But permanent observer. Mm. Yes, it has a permanent observer status. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay. Let me see what else they rejected. Belarus is still... No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, continue stepping up so, its efforts in um, area... Excuse of, me. Yes. I'm listening. Uh -huh. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Someone wanted to say something and then okay. <laughs> Belarus said continue stepping up efforts in the area of fighting trafficking as well as consider the possibility of inviting the special rapporteur on trafficking in persons, especially in women and children to visit the country. Now, that is a very simple recommendation. But once you see the government noting it, then you know there are issues. Uh, yes. It means that there are things that India is hiding. They don't want a special rapporteur to come and do what? Mm, an investigation, yeah, yes. An investigation. Then Many are related, the US. Many Many are related, are related to, trafficking. to trafficking. Ensure that laws are fully and consistently enforced to provide adequate protection for members of the religious minorities, scheduled caste and adversary groups, as well as women trafficking victims and LGBT citizens. Now I'm telling you, India would have accepted this thing if they are not put this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. If these mm -hmm. ones had not been listed, India would have accepted. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, LGBT guys would like to list themselves as part of the minorities, as part minorities. of uh, the discriminated people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, Canada, what is this they rejected now? 
strength okay. and protection of children's rights, including the ratification of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Eh, India has not ratified. <laughs> <laughs> by improving mechanisms and resources for the implementation of the existing legislation and by demonstrating higher conviction rates for crimes against children such as sexual exploitation, child labor. Oh my God. My God, it is much. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my. There, Cannot... There's even high, high infanticide there. Once you see a government rejecting something on children, that is bad news. Yeah. Well, the child has no rights in that country. This is really interesting. Let me first do a quick search and see. Uh, uh, India. Status. Convention. Oh, okay. Rights of children. Okay, let's see how it goes. Ratification status. Okay, it is UN, United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Oh, the government of the state. This is really very sad. So you realize that one of the things you can also do if your government has not ratified okay. it, one of the recommendations has to be inviting it to do what to ratify yes uh, richard hey india has ratified india 1992 yeah, but they ratified what is going on now yeah they acceded to the treaty in 1992 so the recommendation was outplaced i was wondering they acceded to the treaty because you see when you see India here, I was really surprised because let me see Costa Rica. Let me see. E -F -G -H -R. You see India? Okay. They yeah. acceded yeah. to the yes. treaty in nineteen ninety two. Accession is as good as ratification. I would be surprised. Okay, so the other things they noted in that recommendation not not the question of, uh, okay. So you've seen how to search for the status of a treaty. You just Google straight away, status of ratification of a given treaty, and uh, you will get to a page like this one. Signatories 140, 196 parties. This, the, the, the Convention on the Right of the Child is the one of the most highly ratified treaties. Okay, so you've seen how to use that search engine, UPRI Info, mm. okay? Yeah. You could search by issue, you could search by country, you could search by recommending set, like you can narrow down and say, uh, I just want to find out what the US has told India about trafficking. Mm -hmm. If you know a country where many Indians are a destination, you check on it. Has Finland ever said anything I to India? You see, Finland has not said anything, yeah. so you not find any result. Okay. But when we put Canada, when we do uh, Costa Rica, you want to check Costa Rica? Yes. You see, when we searched by country, you know, the state under review is India, whether Canada has said anything on trafficking in the second cycle, you will get Canada because Canada said something. If there's no if they've not said anything, you'll get no results. Now, what that informs you is that you can monitor the recommendations a given country has been making to your government in the past three cycles. And it prepares you to know where their interest is, and you would be able to 
and you would be able to frame uh, your recommendation and make it appealing uh, to the state which you want to prioritize your your recommendation. Yes, uh, Richard, I've been yes, asking for a very long time. It is time for a few questions, if any. Yeah, Richard, um, there and there Canada, the name of Canada, for example. There are some words under the name Canada. What are these means? No, in Canada, uh, yes, this. These ones. Ah, okay. Yeah. These are groupings, global groupings. Okay. This organization of Asian states, I think OIF, the Commonwealth, these are memberships to global groups. I may not be very accurate on what they are, what OIF is or OS, but we can find Organization of American States, yes, OAS. Okay. The two continents of the Americas. It means that this country belongs to this category of groups. What okay. happens is that because UPR Info is an NGO, and it knows how states behave, sometimes states make recommendations based on an agreed position mm -hmm. in their local area. For example, mm -hmm. uh, let me see, uh, Canada, let's keep trafficking, okay? No, let's change from mm -hmm. India, uh, no, let's change a country here. Uh, let's see, any European country. Let's put Burkina Faso here. Okay, now Burkina Faso did not say anything to India, did it? Uh, we put no. uh, Haiti. Okay, and let's it's change Ghana. The, let's change the issue to food and to see if they have ever said anything to Haiti on food. Nothing. Okay, let's keep Haiti <laughs> and put France, so that you see how it is. I want to get a European country to be making a recommendation. Italy, um, Italy, Italy. Yes. No query. Let's see if Italy has ever said anything to <laughs> Haiti. Okay. And we are limiting it to the second cycle. Let me do all cycles. In that way, we increase our size. Nothing. No. Nothing. Okay. Let me change. Uh, where is Italy? Is Italy funding any country on, in food? I don't know. I don't know. What about Germany? Take Nigeria now. Eh? Nigeria? <laughs> hey, okay, Ghana. okay. Okay, let's check Nigeria. Check Ghana. See Ghana. Let's check Nigeria. I, I, I know how. We I'm have Ghana. H-I-J. Down some more. Um, okay. Up and some more. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We have Nigeria. <laughs> Let's see what the Italians have told Nigeria about food. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Okay. Ghana, 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 Ghana. Let's see what the Germans have told Ghana, Nigeria about Nigeria. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. They're fine. Nothing. They're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're fine. Anything. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But food, food, food has not been a very popular right. Let's put uh, <laughs> justice. Good justice. justice. Let's see. Yes, the Germans have been interested in justice. Oh, human rights. Human rights. Ah. Rights violation ah. by state agents. Now, when you look at Germany here. I don't know. This address is... urgently. Address urgently the issue of impunity <laughs> by strengthening the rule of law. <laughs> the rule of law, including through a review of the judicial now, system. Now, whoever may ask the groupings, I will go and check what WIOG is. But you see, Africa here. It means Nigeria is from Africa. It belongs to uh, African hey, Union. Yeah. It is a member of yeah, the Commonwealth. Huh? Oh, I see. Okay. Ah. And it may be oh, I is oil importing countries. Uh -huh. It is an oil importing country. This, uh, what UPR Info has been it's doing, doing is to... organization of Islamic countries. Ah, yes, yeah, organization of Islamic countries also. Yeah. yeah. So, what happens is that uh, the, the UPR yes. Info, by categorizing countries, it helps you in advance know how a certain government is likely to 
behave with regard to a given recommendation. Mm -hmm. You follow. Yes. Now, the, 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 the UN does yes. not do that, but NGOs, because they are being strategic, when you know which block a given country comes from, you can know which recommendations to take to them. Yeah. Oh. So that, that, that's the purpose of these uh, groupings. But th this yeah. is an NGO site. It is, it's not an official site. The official site would have been the UN site, but there are things the official site does not do. And there are things the official site does that this NGO is not doing. But already with the recommendations, this NGO site is doing a great job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, Richard. Yes. Uh, I'm going to ask a question. Richard Ghana. Okay. Richard Ghana. Yep. Now we look at Ghana. You, you, you look for Ghana, sister. Let's do another question now. <laughs> yes. I'm going to ask a question. Yes, ask. Can you Wait. ask? Yes, um, thank you very much. This has been very good. I'm just wondering about the trafficking in persons report. Mm. Does that just form, uh, you know, part of the source where you can get, you know, um, information to to prepare a report or anything on human trafficking? Like, do what? Okay, I know the U.S. Department does um, prepare that, but a government bound not necessarily bound are they to force recommendations given which it's just prepared by a country which report are you talking about the trafficking in persons report that often comes um ah, in uh, okay. june i mean in june yeah around 30th june every year um yeah i'm, I'm just trying to to, to see but, how but it fits by which agency? By the state, by state, the U.S. State Department. <laughs> now, you see, that is a government that has chosen to assess how other governments are behaving. Mm. It is only serving an information purpose. Okay. It only Fair serves enough. an information purpose. It is good but can, for us. But it can save. Yes, it is for us who are in advocacy. It is a good report. Uh -huh. Okay. Fair enough. Yes. But That's where the government will follow necessarily the recommendations in there, that is 50-50. It is largely okay. dependent on, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Mm. May I ask you something? Uh, Please go ahead, Clara. Thank you. Um, about this, this um, opportunity that the social society have to, to, to bring the, the issues to the UN, Yes, we have. Uh, we are part of the Vivat International. Yes, yes, Vivat. Yes, yes Vivat does reports. That's right. Exactly, like a Franciscan uh, organization also yes. has this. Yes. But my question is, how uh, how much incidents these organisms have really, really, with all these things and bureaucracy that you have, and all the reports and all these. Uh, structure that is needed to follow. Uh, are they really useful to this? Uh... Okay, let, let me show you something that will make you understand that this thing is important. I'll, I'll demonstrate using Kenya because I've been <laughs> part of the yeah. Kenya process. Um, in the first site, The first cycle, first cycle, yes. And I will go straight to, I'll pull out two documents. First is the stakeholder information. Okay, now this is, you see, summary prepared by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human yeah. Rights. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this is supposed to be the stakeholder. Yeah. Now, uh, just look closely. Do you see things called joint submission for? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. 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 you see. Yes. 
Yes, yes. Uh-huh. KSC. JS. Um, JS4, JS4. Then, uh, that means John Submission 4. Yeah, what? It's what? JSC means what? Eh? JSC means what? JS. JS is Joint Submission. Yes, but KSC. KSC. Uh, could it be? Let's go to the table of contents. EPN. You see, joint submission three. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. Okay. How many pages are this? This is uh, the report is yes. eleven pages. Actually, it was more than that. Have been ten. Then you take notes so we can get your case. You see, joint submission one, the organizations listed there. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. RRC, the international lesbian, <laughs> gay, bisexual. Got yes, all these guys do their stuff. Then joint submission mm. two, international pen, publishers associations, index of spells. Then joint submission three, my Inuit pastoralist integrated development. You see, there are grassroots communities and Orioles mm. Welfare Council. Yeah. You see, mm. no? Then you see the intermission for the Kenya yeah. movement of Catholic professionals. Mm. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Should be muted now. Ah, uh, Kenya Stakeholders Coalition (KSC). Aha, uh -huh. yes, this is KSC. Mm. All right. Okay. So, uh, okay. so they then. Let me see. So ours is JS4. And you remember how often we are quoted in that report? You remember? When we are looking yes. through the report, they mm. kept mentioning us JS4. Okay. Yes, so made similar recommendations. Resulted in overstretched facilities. I don't know, but the right to education. I know myself. When is on budget, environmental conservation. Yes, for mentioned that access to water is lower in rural areas and significantly lower among the poor. So they, they are literally capturing. What we yes for recommended that Kenya provide in all centers and hospitals accessible free value and counseling services. Okay. Okay. So so you get listened to in that sense. Now we have something that they did not capture here in uh, in the stakeholder report, but we were able to get in via the precession advocacy. And I'm going mm -hmm. to try and see what is no 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 it's a lot of your thing, but okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let me do this search and you see. Uh Let's search for Kenya and uh, the that I remember very well. I met these fellows during the precession advocacy. The stakeholder, the compilation by by the Office of High Commissioner had not captured our issue. Uh, where is it? What was the issue? I'm looking for food. I hope these guys have food. Right to food, yes. Okay. And uh, the cycle is the first cycle. It's an experience I can never forget. That's something that we had put in our report, but the Office of High Commissioner had neglected, ended up coming up on the floor. You see, Spain? Yeah. This recommendation was in our stakeholder report. 
but it had been ignored by the Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights. They didn't include it. So during the precession advocacy, I made it to the mission in Spain, the, the permanent mission in Spain when I was going around during the precession. And the guy did not change a single word. As we wrote it is the way he read it on the floor. On the floor. <laughs> To ensure the equitable distribution of water and food to the entire population, especially during times of drought. At that time, we had an experience where a food was rotting in one part of the country, and in another part oh. of the country, we are busy fundraising to feed them. Okay. Oh, so what a, what an uh, irony! This lady did not even touch it; she just plugged it in and read it out as part of what she read, okay? Then we keep Kenya and I give you Slovenia. This, ah, this was an enjoyable process for me. Even, mm -hmm. though, even though government rejected our, our recommendation. Uh, food, yes. Uh, let me do second cycle. Hmm. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Why, 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 why and relisting Kenya's second cycle? How come? Let me do health, maybe. This is interesting. And they listing rejected recommendations. Let's do health and see did Slovenia say anything? Second cycle, yes. Aha. Now, do you see this recommendation? Yes. And you see that government rejected it's a budget. it. Budget. Mm -hmm. when, when we are doing the precession work, I go and I talk about all these things and our challenges. Then this lady, she's a very young lady. I think she was like 32 or something. She says, what? Your government is not feeding its people and doesn't seem interested in health. Then what is government doing? You get the point. Why? Yes. So Indians have a socialist background. Mm. are supposed mm -hmm, to provide mm -hmm. most of the basics. Mm. So yeah. 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 The government is not meeting health obligations. The government is not meeting this. They would really wonder. When she mm. said that, mm -hmm. for me, in my heart, I knew she's going to say it as part mm -hmm. of her. So actually, as it is there, she did not even edit a single word. Mm -hmm. Increase mm -hmm. the health budget allocation to the recommended 15% of gross domestic product. In line with its commitment, government has made a commitment and expedite the process of implementing universal health care coverage. Ah, so they merged it. Mm. Now, for some reason, government increased from from four point something that at that time they're at around six times they're at around six with regard to with regard to to the health question Good. and right now we have something called the universal health care push that is going on so sister who asked whether we have any impact on this process mm -hmm. when we participate the answer is there is impact because we get governments to speak to governments it is not us speaking to them we get governments to speak to governments. And then for us, we back, come back home and follow up. Mm -hmm. My friend, you committed to other governments, including Slovenia, mm -hmm. that this thing should happen. What are you doing about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yes. Yeah. Now we've been talking thank you. for more it's than good. two hours. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for having tolerated me. And all these, <laughs> things, there are too many, but uh, there is no better way of doing it. And uh, right, so. I would like to say that I will be preparing a Google form for evaluation of the course. So we can get some feedback on how we can do it better and improve it for future groups and things like that. Uh, May I ask still a question? Yes. <laughs> yes. If we don't manage to finish our assignment to the, at the right time, like for the 30th of April or 7th of May, is that a big issue or do, is it uh, possible maybe one, two, three days later or it is not for me, accepted? For, for, for me, it is not a big issue on my end. Mm, uh, that is good. 
it's good. Thank you. <laughs> because sometimes you are so squeezed in, in other things and I, I was really Let under pressure. Let us agree. How much more time do you need to finish? Because another course I'm told is going to start in May. You might not have time to do these things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe one two days later. How many? How many? How many, how many sessions is the coming course? Uh, don't we don't know. know. We don't know. We don't have an we idea. Need, we need a break between now and the day. <laughs> yes. It has been a month. It's just a month. We can't get a break. Oh. We can't get it. We don't know. know. <laughs> it is very interesting and it is good to take time for searching and researching. It is very interesting and very important. So in order not to rush too much, uh, mm. it's good to have a little bit more because we have also in next to the course, we have also some other uh, important issues to tackle with. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So in my estimation, mm. you know, for me, I will shift the timelines to beyond the seven. I, have no, I don't have a problem, but the, it, it, if you are a procrastinator like me, for me, I know myself, once they push time, I also relax. Yeah. And again, yes. it matches up with me. And you know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like if, it, if it is one or two or three days later, that is not a problem. Huh? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, Sarah. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Richard. So I will do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Let's Thank continue you. dialoguing on the WhatsApp group. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Thank you for great to you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I can understand. Thank you. Thank you, you Professor Richard. Yes. Thank, Thank you so much. All right, good people. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Prof. Bye. Okay, hey. bye. Enjoy bye. your course. You're going there before you enjoy your course. Where are you going now? Thank you so much. God bless us all. We have to pray and go officially, my friend. Sister yeah, Paula. Yeah. Richard, yeah. would you like to have also no. to pray like now? Like yeah. Yeah. There's someone Richard, who has spoken. Like someone has not spoken in the whole course. Honorin. <laughs> Honorin, are you there? <laughs> yes, I'm yes. there. I'm there. Uh, you did not speak in the entire course, so you pray for us and uh, <laughs> King will bless us. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Let's pray in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hello. Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts of life. We thank you for the gifts of one another. We thank you for the gift of our teacher, Richard. Lord, may you continue to be with us. Bless each and every one of us as we continue with this course. We continue to pray for what is going on in the world, the COVID-19. Lord, may you come to our aid. Bless those who don't have food, those who are suffering. Lord, may you be, may you touch their hearts. Bless, bless each and every one of them. We ask all these through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And may the Lord be with you. And we bless your spirit. The blessings of the Almighty God bless and keep you always in the Father and of the Son. Amen. 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 Internet blessing. Amen. Thank you. Internet blessing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mother, for this internet blessing. Very, very effective. No online blessing. Bye. Hello. Bye. 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 Thank you, Bye. Thank you, Bye. Thank you, Bye. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, sisters. Thank you, Father. Bye. Thank you. We now have yeah. a break until until May. You know. Yes. May. 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 May is not far. Two days time. Two days time. Today after tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.
Richard, I would like to ask you a question about this WhatsApp that you say. Are you going to create a group? For the? The create editor. For the WhatsApp that you, the WhatsApp that you mentioned last, in the last yeah, part. Yes. Are you going to create a group? Yes. Oh. Yes, I created it. Okay. No, sister. Uh, uh, this is who, Sister Gabriela? Yes, Richard, I am Sister Gabriela. Yes, you sent me a message, I think. I think I added you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, let me check my phone right now before you get off. Uh huh. You sent me a message, but you still need to fill in that Google form. One thing I realized many of you are not on, uh, on Twitter. And no, I don't have Twitter. I just have I just... The, work, the work we are doing. Yes. If it is to move the people, the speaker makers are usually on Twitter. Uh, young people are on WhatsApp, young people are on Facebook, but the decision makers are usually on Twitter. When you tweet something serious, yeah. it usually attracts attraction. So I would encourage people to consider joining uh, uh, joining Twitter progressively. I know it takes a lot of space on your phone, but uh, okay, I will try to create the Twitter, Richard. But I I don't no, I don't promise Gabriela, you. Sister Gabriela, I've not yet but thank you so much. I have Sister Gabriela. Sister Gabriela. No. Sister Gabriela? Sister Gabriela? Yes, Richard, I can hear you. Get into the chat room. You will see my yes, phone I, number. Uh, I yes. don't see it, Richard. I'm going to, I'm, I'm sending it to the chat room now. Did you see, did you see my, my question is, are you going to create WhatsApp? Yes. They created already. WhatsApp is already but created. I don't, I don't see so I, I don't see your number. Yeah, I'm, go, I'm going to I'm going to type it now. Okay, thank you, Richard. Hold on, hold on. Don't get off the, the whatever yet. Okay. Um something is not right with my system. <laughs> and then get into the chat room again. Let me see. Yes, so I reply to Gabriela. Gabriela. Yes, Richard. You've seen the number. Yes, now I see the number, Richard. Thank you so much. I will add you. Send me a, a WhatsApp message so I add you to the group now. Kinsley, okay, thank you. WhatsApp group. Okay, thank you so much, Richard. God bless you. Right. I'll just get on my own today, okay? I don't know whether you get it. You, you you filled in the form today? Yeah, I just filled the form today. Just send a text. I give you my number right now. Number right now. Okay. Uh, please, I, hope you it. It. I sent my own. Okay. And, you, it. and you're not yet added to the group. I, I did. I sent you. I filled in the form. Yeah, but are you are you added to the WhatsApp group? I don't, I don't know yet, but I said I feel the phone. How often do you check your, your WhatsApp? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Where, 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 where. Are, you, are you from Vincent Depot community? Yes. So you don't check your group? <laughs> <laughs> I do. You rarely okay. check your WhatsApp. I, I added you yesterday. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Uh, Kinsley, did you put something? Yes. Yeah, I'll just send you my number. Okay. Just send my WhatsApp me. number. Huh? Okay. Good. Now, ah, okay. <sighs> Just do me a message. Richard, I'm not there. Message on my WhatsApp. Richard, I'm not on the WhatsApp. Why? I don't know. 
<laughs> Please add me also. I have put my number in the chat group. No, 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 no. I'm just going to post my number so that you all take it. Okay, okay, you, sir. Then you okay, send sir. me messages on my WhatsApp so I can add you. You send me a okay. message with your name, name and uh, congregation initials. That's all I need. I did. I did the one from the social communication, the, the um, yes. email you sent us. I yes. feel it. What is happening? If you are on the group, then you already added. When did you send? Yesterday? Today. Uh, okay. Let me just... I sent twice because first I had the wrong number. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I, mixed, I mixed up one number, so I sent twice. Aha, then you need to send it again. Yeah, I did. I sent twice. Yeah. You are who? Sister Birgitta. Birgitta, I have Birgitta here, and you sent today? Yes, I twice. I don't have you. Mm -hmm. I've not yet. Uh... Okay, I'm posting my number right now for each one of you. Okay. Yeah, then it's so that you send me a WhatsApp message. Okay. There you go. Okay. So you send me a WhatsApp message with your name and congregation initials. Yes. Then that's how I will know that you need to be added. Thank you so much. Okay. Now I'm going for prayer. I pray for all of us. Please. Yes. Thank and, you. And for all people who are sick in our world and suffer under the outcome of COVID-19. Yes. There are people who have not signed out. They are still in the room. Okay. Bye. All of you. <laughs> Bye. I'm going out. <laughs>